by everything that we can see, baptism is very simple. You've got water, God's word, and the sinner. But what is actually happening in baptism is extraordinary and somewhat beyond our comprehension. In short, baptism connects you to Christ in his death and in his resurrection. And we see this in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Paul writes, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Now this is pretty significant, see? Because when we are baptized, we are connected to Christ. That means when Christ is on the cross, and he is receiving in his person the punishment for our sins, that we are connected to him. And as Christ is taken off of the cross and put into the tomb, where are your sins? Well, I'll draw you a little picture. As you may remember, I'm somewhat of a nerd. So. Okay, so here's a picture, right? All right, there's the tomb. Right? And there's your sin in the tomb. But what happened when Christ resurrected? When Christ resurrected, you remain connected to Christ. You are no longer connected to death, which is the wages of sin. You are connected to Christ, and so your sin stays in the grave, taken care of, separated from you, because Christ has conquered it. And you are connected to Christ in his resurrection. What if Christ never rose from the dead, then what? Well, then we'd be in big trouble because the, the, the sin that killed Christ would be coming for you next. The death that came to Christ because of your sin would surely be coming for you, and you would have no hope for everlasting life in God's kingdom. Your sin no longer defines you because your sin is here. What defines you is the righteousness of Christ. And so Luther writes in his small catechism that baptizing with water indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all, all sins and evil desires, and that the new man should daily emerge and arise and live before God in righteousness and purity forever, because that's how God sees you. Your sin no longer defines who you are. Instead, your connection to Christ defines you, because Christ is righteous so too you are righteous.